And I think we're live. Double check over here on this other computer and see. It's like we are. Hey, all right. Hey, um, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, no matter where you are around the world. Welcome to Kilroy's World. Welcome to tonight's live stream where I'll be uh, showing you guys uh, module two in the labs and the lecture. The labs, I mean, the lectures mostly. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about Ohm's Law and uh, about some resistors. And, and uh, if you're out there and you're a student and you have some questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. But we're going to stick to the to the actual lecture first and then afterwards we'll go over any problems you might have or be having so if you're here welcome uh, certainly I want you to participate ask any questions during the lecture on anything that might be on your mind um, regarding the lecture but um, trying to see here many are here if, if any in any case, I'll go ahead and wait for a couple minutes if there are. Um, some of you guys expressed an interest in being here. Hello, Rolando. I, I see you there. Good afternoon to you. And why did it not tell me? Okay. And welcome to the channel. I actually heard you. Through the Twitch bot or through the uh, speech bot over there on the uh, computer, so that's that's good. Um, Try to make this bigger over there. Stall a little bit. See if see if anybody else will show up. But if not, hey, you'll have the first uh, listen to the lecture. Pop out the chat so I can see it better. I hope you're doing well tonight. I know a lecture is not the uh, the most fun place to be at, right? But uh, I'm glad glad you're here. I'm almost ready with that there, so move this stuff around a little bit. Okay, um, am I going to do this? Oh, am I? So, last time we talked about resistors. Well, resistors is one component of what's called Ohm's Law. I'm going to, let me bring this up, I'm going to show you... Um, I'm going to switch. I think I'm going to do it backward. Go ahead, switch monitors to this other one. Let me turn this one off. Turn that one on. And then what I'm going to do is minimize this here and put the material over here so I can look at it. Um, so in, in module two, in the coursework section in module two, which it's not, it's not available right now, um, I can go ahead and open it up though. It is available. So if you guys want to follow along over there, you most certainly can. All the lectures are going to be in this. These are the labs that I put in here. There may be a, a quiz or two pop up later on, but but these will be the labs you guys are going to be working on. Uh, the lectures themselves are going to be here. First thing I'm going to talk about is the Ohm's Law Circle. Um, however, before I do, though, I want to talk about Ohm's Law. And Ohm's Law is a, is a ratio between voltage, current, and resistance. As you guys know, you know everything's got voltage. Plug into the wall, use batteries, right? Um, 
current is is the uh, the the electron flow through a wire or the amount of electrons that flow through and then resistance is the the actual opposition of of that flow whereas voltage is the, is the potential to to push it all through you know if you have 400 volts you've got more more potential to move the those electrons through um, but anyway Say, for instance, you wanted to find out, and we'll talk more about this. I'm just going to go ahead and explain this. If you wanted to look at the uh, triangle, and for instance, voltage is current times resistance. And if, and if you look at this little bar, that means like multiplication or times. So if you wanted to find out, you... Hey, hey, Trey, how are you doing, man? Um... I am uh, teaching a class, and this is actually the lecture for that class. Uh, I was asked to do a video, and I decided to go ahead and stream it. Welcome, Trey. Trey, uh, Trey does uh, some awesome, awesome uh, Star Trek things. But, uh, you know, you all need to go out and, and check Trey out. But anyway, um, greetings and, and salutations um, for sure. What I was saying is, if you wanted to find out what voltage is, you would multiply current times resistance. And by doing that, you, you have that, that ratio. The same thing if you wanted to find out what current was. Well, if you look at, at if you cover up, and I, I can't, can't cover it up too well, but if you cover it up, and I guess I could figure out a way to do it, if you covered up the current, then it would be voltage divided by resistance. Hey, it's it's the truth, man. It's the truth. It's the truth. I enjoy I enjoy watching your streams so much, man. And you know I can't be everywhere at all all times. I I wish I could watch everybody, um, but uh, but yours in specific, man. And and probably right there because of that, what you just said right there and done. That's that to me. That that's. That's one of the things I love about you, man. That's humility is is something that that you can't put a, a value on. You know? um, anyway, <laughs> so so if you want to find what voltage is, you just pretty much cover up the eye, not not your eye, but but the eye, and then at that point you see this bar here. That means voltage divided by resistance, whereas this one was multiplication or times. So to find out what current is, you multiply, or you uh, take voltage and you divide it by resistance. And we'll go more into this. I've got some examples of this also. On the other hand, if you wanted to find out what resistance was, you would do the same thing. You'd cover up the resistance or you cover up the R. And then you look at what the other two that you have, which in this case is voltage current or V and I. So what would you do? You would divide, you would take voltage and divide the current by it. If, if that sounds confusing, don't, don't let it confuse you. Um, just if you learn that triangle, if the first thing you do is sit down and, and you put that triangle down, that's, that's a, um, the, no, no worries, man, no worries. Uh, that triangle is uh, the, the Ohm's Law triangle. And thusly, there's also one that's a little more complicated and, um, and has wattage added in there. And with wattage being added in there, you have, let's see if I can find it. Um, you have a, uh, a graph, not that one. Uh, where did I put it? Where did I put it? So many windows and surely I didn't close them out. Well, let, let's do it this way. Let's go to the, um, um, the lecture directory and or folder and look at the Ohm's Law Circle. Um, the Ohm's Law Circle, it's a little more complicated. If you look at it, you look at it, it has pretty much the same, uh, the same formula as you might say. If we wanted to know what current was, um, it's, uh, it's voltage divided by resistance. If you, if you look at this, see, current, I, is voltage divided by resistance. It's going to be kind of hard to switch back and forth, but let's see, as long as I find you know, the right tab. 
if you wanted to find out what resistance was, it's voltage divided by current. And I'll talk about these other ones here in a second. Uh, as you can see with, with, the, uh, with the triangle. Resistance is voltage divided by current. And don't say resistance is futile, but uh, that's what they normally say, don't they? Uh, so, so here, resistance is voltage divided by current, right? Look, the triangle says resistance is voltage divided by current if you cover up the resistance. Um, so, so on here, the same thing goes with voltage. Voltage is current times resistance on the on the uh, on the triangle current times resistance so it, it it it's all the same it just looks a little different and actually it's a little more gives you a, a a couple of other formulas you might say for instance for for we're talking about voltage here current times resistance voltage is also wattage divided by current or voltage is also wattage times resistance or the square square root of it so sometimes you can figure it out by just having two of the values to find the third one the ones we're going to work on probably more tonight are the voltage the resistance and i'll talk about watts here in a second current and it'll be these simpler formulas voltage is equal to current times resistance resistance is equal to voltage divided by current or current is equal to voltage divided by resistance as per that triangle. Um, wattage is actually just voltage times current. That's the simple one. The other two are current squared times resistance or voltage squared divided by resistance. And it's all just, just a mathematical formula that, that falls into place. Um, in fact, there, there is a, there's one called um, wattage or, or power is equal to current times voltage okay and, and if you if you look at it this says voltage times current or voltage times current but if you look at it power watts is expressed or power excuse me watts is the the uh, the quantity of power you know the heat that things give off like your your hair dryer is a you know 1500 watt hair dryer or or uh, you know you have a uh, a, a one megawatt phaser, you know, burning a hole in something. But but the point is, is I can't can't really see it. The point is, is is power is equal to current, current times voltage. Uh, in fact, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I, I guess the little bitty one. In other words, it's pi. P power is equal current times voltage. Don't don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to go to uh, that was the that was the Ohm's law circle that we looked at. You'll you'll have it. We'll play with it. We'll we'll do some uh, in the lab. We'll do some 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 calculations with it. Uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, let's see. We go. Let me, let me look. I may have these out of order a little bit. Let me see what this one is. This is another word document. Yeah, yeah. This this is what I want to show you. I think I had this one. So, oops, lost it. So this one is is the uh, is a 5.1 info on, on Ohm's law. And by the way, if you have questions about this, please by all means ask. It's 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 not that you're interrupting me or anything. I, I I'm certainly you know willing to to answer questions um, by all means. So it, with Ohm's law, the pressure or the flow basically it's it's how fast you can fill something up or how many how many uh, um, uh, you know electrons flow through a circuit? There's a similar relationship to water flow in Ohm's law, and and uh, in electric circuits, the, basically what you have in that relationship is voltage, current, and resistance. And I'll go I'll go into it really quickly. Whereas voltage is that pressure, like in like in a water line, that pressure that's pushing, you know, the water through, okay, and, you know, a battery is usually kind of a pressure circuit, and, and, you know, batteries pretty much will fill up, if you think of it, with, with that voltage, you know, how, how batteries will drain and stuff, 
um, you know, you've got your, your battery on your cell phone, your batteries on, on, on all sorts of different uh, items. You know, your, uh, we got a, we got a battery right here, right? And, and this one, this one's got a, you know, a light on it, you know, and, and, and I can, I can drain it by plugging in USB to, 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 to any device, but, but that's, a filled battery basically and as it drains it, it it'll it'll go down and if I can turn it off it'll stop blinding me there we go uh, this thing works like a really nice phaser to anyway I'm just joking um, wouldn't it be nice wouldn't it be nice um, uh, <laughs> so amperage is sometimes called that flow that flow of water that's going through a hose um, and uh, and and supplies that battery or that fills it up with electrons. So if you if you charge something up and you charge it up really, really fast or really, really slow for that matter, for instance, a cell phone, you know how sometimes you'll plug into a cell phone charger and it'll be charging slow and it'll take forever. That's because that flow isn't there. The voltage is probably the same. That 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 potential is still there, but it but it's not giving or inputting or or pushing as many or as many electrons aren't flowing through to fill up to fill up that battery, um, so that flow is less basically. But that flow is called current, and of course the symbol for it is I. The symbol for voltage is is V. Sometimes you'll see the symbol for voltage. I forgot to mention this as as E for electromotive force also, but uh, but V V works, uh, and then Ohm's law. Is uh, is an electric circuit is a mathematical relationship, like I said, between the voltage, the amperage, the wattage. That mathematical relationship, Ohm's law. Ohm was was a, a gentleman back in back in the olden days. You know, that I guess man, a brainiac must have been right to figure this out. Uh, so resistance, voltage, and current in a circuit. It's important to know how amperage is is in the, in the wire or conductor and how it supplies a lamp. Um, if there's too much current flow, what happens? Uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're running something and you're using it a lot, what happens to it? Say an air conditioner that you plug in and it's been running all day long and it won't stop running, right? The power cord gets, gets warm or hot and it could even cause fires, right? Uh, that's because a lot, of, a lot of electrons are flowing through. Um, and some of that power is dissipated off in, in heat, actually, if you think about it. Um, and to have a, a complete circuit, you have to have what's called a load or a resistance, a, uh, a source of, of potential or a voltage, be a battery, could be the you know, electrical plug, um, and a switch. Think about a light. In fact, the, the, the diagram there shows it. Think about a light. You turn a switch on, and what it's doing is it's completing that circuit because normally it, the switch opens up the circuit and you don't get any light. As soon as you close that switch, you got power over here and a light bulb here, that light bulb lights. So um, that, that all kind of comes together. And, and in this case, there's a flow of current that, that lights the, the, the lamp. Uh, electrical circuits always have a voltage source, whether it's a battery or something else, right? Uh, in this case, um, uh, you know, when a battery is supplying voltage, uh, a resistor or a circuit breaker supplying the voltage to a toaster. So, so the circuit breaker acts like a device that opens and closes depending on, you know, overcurrent perhaps. Um, I mean, you could use it like a switch, too, to open the circuit back up and, and forth. But uh, if there's too much current, the circuit breaker heats and opens, in, in a sense. Uh, voltage and resistance. Uh, up here on this one, we've got a 9-volt source, a resistor. And is there anything there, or is that a connection? But uh, in the picture above, the 9-volt battery is connected to the resistor. Uh, and we'll assume it's 100 ohms. We have to have some value to it. And ohms is the, uh, like we talked in the last uh, lecture regarding the, the label we use, ohm is the label we use, right, for, for resistance. So according to Ohm's law, voltage divided by resistance equals amperage. 
So if this battery is 9 volts and you've got a 100 ohm resistor, then the, uh, the, the current that's being drawn is going to be 0 0.09 amps. And through our number calculations that we did last time, it'll be 90 milliamps. And small amperages are, are expressed, obviously, in milliamps, and large ones are expressed in what? Kilo or just regular amps. Excuse me for a second. We're getting a little dry there. So in the picture above, 120 volts is supplying the toaster, right? So if we assume that, that the actual resistance is 20 ohms, and by the way, the less resistance, the more current will flow. The element inside the, the toaster has a low resistance, you know, compared to the 100 uh, ohm resistance, for instance, for that lamp. So with, with a low resistance, a lot more uh, electrons will flow, and, uh, and thus a lot more work gets done, power, current, more current, right, times the voltage will give you more power, more wattage out of, out of that toaster. So voltage divided by resistance is amperage. And, uh, and we, we can go back to, let's see, where is it? We can go back to that voltage. Current times resistance is voltage, right? Um, so the voltage is 120 volts. The resistance is, uh, is, is, is 20, 20 ohms. And what did I say? Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're looking at, at, at current or at I, which is, it went small. Voltage, which is, voltage is current times resistance. But we're not looking for that. We're looking for the, the current, which is voltage divided by resistance. How come it's getting small? We're looking at the current, which is voltage divided by resistance. It's interesting. Interesting how this is flopping back and forth. Now, where is the lecture? That's not the one. That's not the one. I just lost it. I don't. Want to lose it? Where did it go? Okay, let's minimize this. There it is. It's always something, isn't it, Trey? <laughs> anyway, so in that case, right, a toaster is 120 volts, 20 ohm uh, resistance, six amps. That's actually quite a bit of amperage if you think about it. Um, but to get that power, so, um, you know, to, to, to toast your bread. So when the voltage and resistance is known, current can be calculated using Ohm's law, like we just um, Then using a voltmeter and an amp meter explained in, in uh, 4.2 project info meters, which did we, did we look at that? Yeah, I think that was the last, the last uh, lecture piece that we had in the, in, the, in the last one, which is how to use a voltmeter. Okay, so that right there is, is Ohm's Law. That's, that's as simple or as complicated as you want to make it. Are there any questions on anything that I've said at all from, from anyone? Uh, it doesn't matter whom asks the questions. Um, as long as you don't ask me to calculate the joules that are involved in producing an, an ion stream uh, or, or, or a phaser blast or something like that. But I could probably tell you. Let's go on. And there is a little bit of a lag sometimes. Um, before I ask a question and I get a reply back, uh, and I, I understand that. Let's see, let's go to the next one. Oh, yeah. If the next one is here, okay, we did the Ohm's Law Circle. We did this one here. Move this down. Move it right there. We'll come to it to the end. Let's look at uh, 5.2, which is uh, which is meters. 
And I know we talked about meters in, in what was it, 4.1? Or I don't remember what it said, but, but uh, uh, yeah, the previous slide we had done the resistor color codes and we interpreted an ohmmeter and used to verify values. Um, actually, we haven't done that lab. That lab is one of the labs that's going to be done in this module. Um, so, let's see. This isn't the lab, is it? No. No, so the instructions are for generic voltmeter setup, which, in other words, it's how you, how you set the voltmeter. And like the ohmmeter that we had in the last lab, um, in the last physical lab, some meters were different. Some meters had auto ranging. Some meters had, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the sound. Some meters had continuity. Some meters some meters weren't registering uh, when they were open as an OL. It was it was showing up as a one, which I think is kind of confusing, considering that that a, that a short circuit or, or continuity is is zero ohms. So that was kind of weird. But you saw different different voltmeters or different ohm meters and how they reacted. Well, DC and AC meters are the same way. Some of them are auto range. In other words, they pick the, the, the range themselves and give you the exact value. And some of them you have to turn a knob back and forth to, uh, to, to figure out the range like 0 to 20 volts, 0 to 200 volts, 0 to 2,000 volts, etc. Um, but a DC-AC meter is, is capable of measuring DC voltage and AC voltage. And notice the symbol. The symbol for DC is a flat line because uh, direct current does not alternate like AC current does, or AC voltage, excuse me, uh, which is which is to, to a peak, down to a negative peak, back to zero, back up to a positive peak, back down, you know, just like that. Um, that's why it's called alternating current because it alternates between the most negative value and the most, or the highest value, and it's rhythmic, whereas direct current is like, you want 12 volts, boom, you've got 12 volts the whole time. It doesn't change back and forth between positive and negative. Now there is positive and negative DC voltages, but normally DC is on one, um, when you're measuring it, it's, it's, it's always at one peak and always that, that, uh, that amount, unless it's varied. Um, so alternating current or AC, um, usually it's like 120 volts out of the wall and you set the meter up on whatever range falls in place. Um, it might be a 200 volt AC range. Well, you can take the, the, uh, the probes and use the common and the volts position on, on the meter that those probes are hooked up to to plug into the wall and check it. Does it matter which one? Because if you go back and forth like this, it won't matter. You'll still get the same value. And the reason is, is because it's changing back and forth anyway. It averages out to whatever that value is. Whereas direct current, if you put the negative voltage on the positive side and negative in the positive probe on the negative side, it's going to give you one reading. And if you flip them, it'll give you the opposite reading. And I might be going ahead here, uh, and, I, and I probably am. Um, so with DC voltage, you can check batteries by putting the common and the volts, of course, you, you put it on, on the right scale, right? But to whichever, whichever terminals uh, you have on here, like I said, if you flip them back, you'll get a negative voltage than what you have, or the opposite voltage that you have. Um, I'm sure everybody's taken a voltmeter, imagine, and check the battery. Um, but uh, amperage, as as you hook up, as you hook up to that power source, amperage is that that flow of current going through the uh, uh, the, the wire. Basically, um, the meter must be placed in the circuit instead of touching the terminals. Um, this doesn't show up, but maybe maybe another picture does a little bit better. Uh, now this this one here, I'm wondering why they put that picture there. With they're saying that the meter boobs to be placed in a circuit to allow the current to flow through it. So by by opening the circuit up and putting an ammeter, you're actually putting yourself in the path that the current is flowing, 
and you're counting every single one of those electrons that flows through that circuit, but you're counting it through the meter. Whereas if you're checking a battery, you're putting the, the positive, one lead on the positive and one lead on the negative. And the same thing with, a, with a, a, an ohm meter. You're checking resistance by putting one meter or one lead of the meter and the other lead on the other side of that, of that uh, resistor. But current is different. You basically open up the circuit and you put the leads within the circuit. And we'll be doing some of that, lots of it in fact. So let's let's see how this goes. So the circuit in Figure 4.7 shows a 100 ohm resistance a resistor connected to a 9 volt battery, just like that. The calculated current of the circuit, and you would calculate it by. We go, we bring this up, again, again. She's she's getting she's getting small. If you want to calculate, let me see if I can. Do it. Yeah, I, I think we can do it this. If you want to figure out what the current is through here, well, look, you know you've got 9 volts for the battery. That, there's our voltage. You know you've got 100 ohms for the resistance that's there. So what is the current that's flowing through that circuit? Well, if you use Ohm's law, current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Hey, look at there. 9 volts divided by 100 ohms. And that equals 0.9 amps, or... 90 milliamps because remember to com to convert since this is volts which is the whole unit the whole label and this is ohms which is again the whole unit of the whole label you're going to come out with amps on this side but we want to make it more manageable right so what we do is we take and we move the decimal over to where instead of it being amps we, we get milliamps and if you if you uh if if you look at this this is this is converting it uh, times 10 to the negative third, going from amps to milliamps, which is 10 to the negative third. So the negative, you move the decimal point to the right by three. And as you can see, we go one, two, three, and that's how we come up with the milliamps. An ammeter can be placed in the circuit to verify that calculation. So we can, we can calculate it. I'm moving this over so that I can grab it again. We can calculate it by putting a, a a, an ammeter in, in the circuit. So if we, we do that, again, we broke the circuit, we put one lead on, on one side and the other lead on the other side, and then we can measure that 90, that 90 uh, milliamps or that 0 0.09 amps, but we have to open up the circuit and we have to place the meter within the circuit. That's weird. I pulled it off to the left, but I saw it go to the, to the right over here on the monitor. So if you want to check an amp, amp meter, uh, amperes or an amp meter connection, we, uh, the amp meter has, uh, the amp meter has to be connected, uh, or I'm sorry, the amp meter is not connected like a voltmeter. The circuit must be disconnected and reconnected to the amp meters. In other words, you power off the circuit, you place the, the amp meter in the circuit, then, oh, and one thing is you make sure that you you have the right range unless it's an uh, auto-ranging meter because you don't want to have it set on really a fine scale and it's going to draw a lot of current. So you always set it on the highest scale you can and then, and then change it back down. But really importantly, you unplug or you turn off the circuit so that there is no current flow. And that does two things. It keeps you from getting electrocuted if it's high enough current. You won't die, hopefully or hurt yourself, burned. I mean, and that's probably the, the least of the, of the problems. Of course, death, like I'm saying, is, is, is really bad. It can stop your heart, all sorts of things. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just mentioning some of the issues that could take place. So you always want to power down. In fact, when you ever, you work on any electronic device, if it's, if it's a, uh, you know, a, a computer, if it's, if it's a, a, you know, a, a panel, electrical panel, you always shut off the power. Uh, if you want to check to see if a circuit breaker is bad in a house, you shut down the power. It's, 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 it's the, the thing to do. If you want to fix an electrical outlet, you want to change a, a, a fan, for instance, replace one, you power down. You always unplug things before you work on it. Um, it it's, just, it's, just safe, it's just a safe practice.
So the circuit must be disconnected and then reconnected with the amp meter. An amp meter must be placed in series with the load, in series. So in series means that it's one, you know, right after the other one uh, versus parallel, which is something like this or piggyback, right? But, but in series is, is right, at, right in the circuit. Wherever that current flow is in, flow is, you put it right in that circuit. So, um, and it also says an amp meter must be placed in series with the load. Oh, it said it twice. An amp meter must be placed in series with the load. Repeat it again. An amp meter must be placed in series with the load. So if an amp meter is mistakenly used like a voltmeter, uh, it will blow the fuse in the meter. And, and that's the same thing with, with, a, with an ohm meter. If you use a no meter, the meter setting, you could blow up the meter. In fact, I have blown up the meter. Those little red, hold on a second. Remember I was mentioning in class, these little red uh, cheap ohm meters that, that we're gonna use to, to measure current. I was measuring voltage with these things and I forgot and I went over to the, uh, or I checked some resistance and I went back to the battery to check the voltage on the battery and what happened oh my gosh I let the smoke out and and it's not a good thing to let the smoke out it, you know, because it was on the on the ohms range the same thing if it's on the uh, amperage range it will blow out the, the meter um, if the ammeter is placed in parallel with the voltage source it will blow the fuse and that meter must be placed in series with the load that's, that's the second part of the lecture. Let's see what else we've got. Talked about Ohm's Law. Pardon me. Let's uh, look at fuses and switches. Any questions out there? So let me, let me fire this up too so I can maybe... Maybe in conjunction with, let's see, I think I can do this one. Okay, I just, I just want to go back and forth maybe, let's see what, let's see this one. So, yeah, switches, that's, that's what we're talking about. So basically a switch is, is a, a device that's used to control whether the current is on or off in a circuit. It doesn't control whether it's on or off. It basically opens up. I mean, that is true. It controls it. It opens up. A closed switch is actually like a, like a zero uh, resistance or a wire um, that, that's put in, in the path of it. Whereas if you turn it off, it opens up. So it's like infinite resistance at that point. Um, it completes a path uh, for current to flow is basically what it does. So that, for instance, a light can be on or a light can be off. Uh, switch ratings. A uh, switch uh, has both a current rating and a voltage rating. And uh, the current rating corresponds to the maximum allow current that basically can flow through it. Uh, if, if too much current flows through it, it'll heat up, it'll burn up, it'll, it'll cause fires, it'll, it won't be good. Not good at all. Uh, there we go. Um, And of course, because the, the, the ratio of voltage and current, you want to always use a switch that's rated for that particular voltage too. Um, so a series switch is used to open and close a circuit, and that's an that's A. It's, it's used to, and notice it's in series also. Uh, it's op opening and closing a circuit. So current's gonna flow through here, or, or it's not gonna flow here, through here in this case. And at that point, this shows it real well. So when you close a switch and you take a voltmeter and you put it on these points of the switch, you get zero voltage because it's like putting it on a wire. There's, it's like basically doing this. But if you open up a switch, the, uh, the available voltage in that circuit or that branch of that circuit, we'll talk about branches later, um, is in this case, it's the source voltage whatever is available to that to that branch. So the, the voltage actually all drops on there. And if you notice the light bulb, 
at the point that you open up a switch, there's no, there's no current flow. So if there's no current flow, there's not going to be any voltage either. And that's again, going back to Ohm's law. Um, if you do the calculation, uh, you know, current is zero, right? The resistance of that light bulb is, I don't know, 10 ohms, 100 ohms, it doesn't matter. Zero times whatever the resistance is is still zero, so the voltage is going to be zero. So you can actually calculate what's called voltage drops that way. In this case, there is current flow, current flowing through here. There, it does have resistance because the, the, the element of the, of the light bulb has resistance. So, so there is, there is a, a, that formula works then. And it's not that it doesn't work, the formula still works, but you do get a value out of that formula if, if there is some type of current flow. So, so there is a voltage. In this case, it happens to be the voltage drop of, of the circuit because that's the only thing else that's in the circuit. So all the voltage is dropped across there. And we'll see later on that if we have resistors in series with different values or, or even with the same value, there will be voltage drops across those resistors uh, depending on, on the resistance value of them. If all of them are the same value, say you've got a 100 ohm, 100 ohm, and a 100 ohm resistor, then you're going to get a third of the voltage dropped on one, a third of the voltage dropped on the other one, and a third of the voltage dropped on the other one. In this case, this is, this is a 12 volt circuit. You're going to have four volts, four volts, four volts. And between two of them, you're going to have eight volts. It, and we'll, we'll see that in some of the labs that, that, uh, that we'll be doing. Talk a little bit about switch definitions and what we call different switches. Uh, if you notice the schematic symbol for this, and, and it, it may not look like, like anything, but this is how you put uh, the definition of switches on paper. Uh, single pole, single throw. It has one pole, and you just either turn it on or off. Single pole, double throw. When you, when you change it from one throw to the other, it only has one throw, you... Uh, I'm sorry, when, when you have one single pole on one side and, and a double on the other, you move back and forth between the circuit. So in essence, you're picking one or the other. This one in this case has got two poles and, of course, two throws. Single pole, single throw. Oh, I'm sorry, the throw is the movement, right? Just like here, we got a... a, a A, th a throw. I was going to say this is double throw. How come this is double throw and this is single throw? But but the thing is, is that it has one movement. Here, it it opens both of these up. This little dashed line means that it's connected. Same thing as here. It's it means that both of these are connected. So so when when you throw this switch, you actually have uh, two poles that you can go to, whereas this one you've only got one. So there's there's various different configurations in the, in one of the labs we had the last lab we had a switch that would go one way and make one connection and then go to the center and then go over the other side. Um, I think we have one of those here, but anyway, so you would want to use a switch of this configuration of the single pole double throw configuration if you wanted to turn a radio on. Or turn the light on basically you just right there that creates a path for the light to the light turns on and then if you move it to this one well it opens up the circuit to this one so the light goes off and the radio turns on in this one in this configuration you have um, you have two circuits have or two sources of voltage you have a 9 volt volt circuit and a 24 volt circuit with this type of switch configuration, you're controlling two different circuits. And when you, when you move it, you're moving it to either both of them being off or both of them being on. And by doing that, this one is one path which supplies nine volts to that radio. And this one will supply 12 volts to the light. Light will be a 12 volt light and the radio will be a nine volt radio. It's just an example. It's, in this case here, you have multiple circuits. And the way this configuration works is 
it allows you to, uh, to, to change the speed of this DC motor. Now, the way they're showing it there, I'm trying to wrap my head around it because the ones, the motors that I've seen like this either have resistors that these switches are connected to and you have different voltage drops and that's the voltage that's applied to, to the, uh, the motor or it's connected to different windings on that motor. So the more windings you have, the faster the motor will turn basically if you, if you, you give it more, more voltage and more, more current flow through those windings, it'll, it'll have more magnetic field and it'll make it turn uh, faster. So the way switches look are like this. There's th those that we were looking at are here like this. They could be single throw, double pole, double throw, single throw, whatever the configuration, but these are called toggle switches. And I know you, everyone has seen these. You've also seen these, these push button type of switches. This is what a normally closed, in, in the schematic symbol will always show the connections touching like that, or an normally open push button. So this one, this one's not making any connection in the circuit, not closing the circuit until somebody presses it. When somebody presses it, then it, then it completes the circuit and allows the current to flow. In, in this one here, in the B one, it's always providing current until somebody pushes it and then it opens the circuit up. There's various uses depending on the application, of course. There's also some what's called dip switches, which are dual inline package switches. Now these, these were used a lot back in the, in the 80s and in the 90s, and they're probably still used, you know, in, in garage door openers maybe to set certain sequences, but with with uh, the the advent of of uh, memory and software, these switches have gone away to 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 the information being stored in BIOS, for instance, uh, basically stored software wise um, or firmware wise actually. Whereas these switches, when you flip them, and of course they're they're on or off, which is like a one or a zero. Hey, doesn't that make sense that if it's a one or a zero that we possibly use it in, in, a, in a ROM or, or in a, you know, some type of electronic or semiconductor device that retains whether it's on or off, you know, um, that's why they're no longer around as much. They're still used somewhere. I haven't seen one in a long time, to be honest, but they're little banks of switches. And I was going to say you could probably see, uh, you could probably figure out what the ratings are on it by the by the numbers because most of them, most switches and most components for that matter will have some type of of numeric designations, you know, to to what model it is. Well, you look it up and you can see what the ratings are and stuff. And back in the day, it was really hard to figure this stuff out, but today you you can probably you can probably figure out. Amp is actually the 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 manufacturer, I believe, not not so much as Amper, Ampere, but um, whatever that model number made by that manufacturer, you could probably figure it out. Um, but anyway, um, another type of switch is is a rotary switch, and the way this one works is as you turn the the knob, it makes connections on on different on different. I want to call it ports, but on different contacts that are in there, so that you know it it does this this connection type right here like this, and then there's a little circuit inside of it basically that you know it might maybe be connecting all of them, it might maybe be connecting half of them, it might maybe be connecting one of them, and as you turn it, it clicks clicks to another one, but you can actually have the circuit on the outside of that of that rotary button to be to be changing. The circuit that's out there, you know, uh, a speed control on a fan, for instance, you know, it starts three, two, one, right? Um, and there's and there's some history behind why a fan normally starts at three. Um, look it up if if that interests you. Uh, it is not part of this lecture, sorry. Um, fuses, fuses, they're kind of like a lifesaver sometimes, literally. Uh, a fuse, and this is the schematic symbol for a fuse. Um, fuses come in like, for instance, this being a 3AG fuse, uh, it, it's a designation for a quarter inch fuse, 
with a length of, a, of an inch and a quarter. I mean, they're, they vary. Uh, AG is, is an abbreviation for automotive glass. Uh, basically, those were the fuses that were used in autos first. Um, the schematic symbol, again, like this, okay, is, looks like that, as shown in figure fuses. I wonder where it's showing it. I wonder if this is the figure, if there's a. Ah, here we go. 1118A, huh? 11. Oh, that's 1116. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. That That's a fuse. I mean, who doesn't know what a fuse looks like, right? They're all over the place. There may, I don't remember, there may be a fuse in here. It's Maybe it's hidden. Um, uh, there's This is a fuse holder. You basically clip fuse in the fuse holder. Notice it's got little tabs or little connections where you can wire it up. These, these I'm sure you've seen them in... in you know, certain electronic devices, you turn that and, and slip the fuse in there. And of course, you've got connections because the fuse, you, you hook up this part in series. In other words, in the circuit, just like you would an ammeter, right? Um, that that touch one side of the circuit and that touch the other side. The same thing here. This touches one side of the circuit, this touches the other. So here, the same thing. This one touches one side of the circuit. This one touches the other. Um, uh, metal fuse can be uh, tin coated copper nickel fuses are available in ratings from one five hundredths of an amp not a half an amp one five hundredths of an amp uh to hundreds of amps and and fuses have kind of been replaced and i'll talk about them here in a second by other things which i know you use them all the time but uh, typical applications of ratings of fuse, fuses, you know, household wiring, uh, fuse. You still have fuses in your home, 15 amps uh, or 20 amp fuses, which are the which are the circuits that are that are most common in in, uh, in homes. Uh, high voltage uh, circuit and televisions receive protection of a quarter amp because it's of a high voltage. You think about you think about uh, this if it's a it's a half an amp, you know, whatever the resistance of the circuit is, if you go really, really high up on the voltage, say a million, million volts, let's just say, and the resistance is one ohm, what's, 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 the, uh, what's the current? Well, it's a million divided by one. So you got a million amps. So, you know, whatever the resistance is. But the point is, is if you have one volt and you have one ohm of resistance, What's what's your what's your current? One divided by one equals one. So the voltage has has a big capacity, uh, a big big role in 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 current, or the amount of current that's actually flowing. Like is resistance or or a resistor has has a big part in in the in the flow of current. Slow blow fuses are just that. They, they it takes them a while. So an example of a slow blow fuse, it'll hold 400% overload and current for up to two seconds. So it'll allow you to, to go past its rating and then for two seconds and then it blows. Or if it comes down, then it was like when you turn it on, if there's a current surge, okay, well, we don't want the fuse blowing in that case because it's turning on, right? Um, Slow blow, slow blow fuses are, are intended to be that way. Now, what I was talking about earlier is uh, 15 amp circuits in homes. Well, most homes, unless it's an older home with older wiring, they don't have uh, fuses anymore. They have circuit breakers. And circuit breakers are used in place of, of uh, fuses to basically protect components. Whether it's an automobile, you know, in a window, uh, or, or whether it's an electrical circuit in a home. So, and this this is blowing time of the fuses for for the slow fuse. The uh, fast acting fuse will just pop as soon as you hit the, the rating, a medium, you know, kind of normal opening, and then a slow fuse. So you can see you know the, the difference uh, of between the three. Um, let's see. When a fuse opens, the applied voltage across the fuse terminals. Oh yeah, so if a fuse opens, like right here, I guess it's an A, is it an A? When a fuse opens, the applied voltage across the fuse terminal. A circuit closed with a good fuse, no schematic symbol for any type of fuse, B is a fuse open. So so what, what that's saying is, with a fuse in place, and that's the symbol for a fuse, 
The voltage drop across the fuse is zero because it's like a straight piece of wire, just as if you were touching the leads like this. Um, if a fuse opens, all the voltage then is dropped across that, uh, th those two points right there. So, so you have that, that voltage there. Um, if, you, if you were checking with a voltmeter with, with a closed fuse or a good fuse, between this side here and ground, you actually you have a complete circuit. I, I, these points are all common or connected together, those ground points. So you basically have a circuit right here, a complete circuit. So you have 120 volts. Same thing on this side. You have 120 volt being dropped across this voltmeter because that's a complete circuit. But if the fuse blows and it opens up, not only do you have 120 volts across the fuse where it would be, because if you notice this is a ground, right? And you can you can just you know go like this through the voltmeter over to this point and down to ground, or go up this way and down here, and you've got 120 volts also. That's that's a complete circuit. But if you go here, well, you can't even really do that. If you go this way, there's no there's there's no voltage drop at that point because this voltage is actually is actually going nowhere because it stops right here. And you say, well, there's a there's a current path here. Yeah, but there's no potential on this side. There's no voltage over here. It's zero. So zero and zero is zero. That's basically what it becomes. Um, so anyway, so a residential wiring is protected by circuit breakers and uh, instead of fuses, and the circuit breaker looks like circuit breaker, the schematic symbol looks like that. So how would you test fuses, you may ask. Um, when you test with a voltmeter, a good fuse has zero volts across it. Um, right? Zero volts, just like we were talking about up here. A good fuse is zero volts for, versus a bad fuse. You basically take a voltmeter and put it across. Now, is that the only way to test one? No, you can also use um, an ohmmeter. If, if the fuse is, is good, it'll be like a piece of wire. The resistance would be zero resistance. If the fuse is open, the resistance is going to be the infinite resistance because you would have an, a zero. Now, this, oh, this is part of another, another lecture. This is, this is wire resistance, and this is a little formula for it. We're not going to really discuss this in the, in the lecture. Um, although I did notice there was, there were some items talking about wire resistance. Uh, even though a wire is just a wire, there is some resistance. And depending on the width of the wire or the gauge, that's why in, uh, in household circuits, you use bigger, thicker wire or, you know, to carry more current or if, say for instance, battery, um, jumping cables are really, really thick cables. And if you've ever used an inexpensive pair of, of jumper cables and you try to jump a car off and you do jump it and it's a thin pair, it'll get really, really hot. And, and the reason is, is because of the thinner cables. So, you know, they might melt and might break easier. Uh, so thicker cable means it can carry more current and not heat up as much. I have a sneaky feeling that's it on the lecture. Uh, there's also a circuit construction kit over here that, uh, that, that I was playing around with the other day or, or earlier. And, uh, and this really isn't going to be anything you guys are going to do, but I just thought I'd, I, I wanted to show you this. Um, if, if I have a voltage source, and this, this right here changes back and forth between schematic view, as you can see the schematics change, an actual physical view, um, but you can take and drag components over. Let's say you wanted to light this light bulb. You could do that. Um, we can. We're not going to put a resistor. We are going to put a switch in here, and then we're going to bring some wires down. I'm just wondering what other components. Move is that? Oh, 
Oh, there's all sorts of goodies in here. See what? Let us take. Let's also put a fuse in here. All right, let's wire this up. Go to there, to this part of the switch. Over where? Put a little of the wire over here. Because remember, the wires connect the the circuit. You have to have a complete path. Notice that the that the that the light bulb is not lit, right? Um, let's put it over here. There. Bring another wire. I'm going to open up the switch. So the switch is open. Bring another piece of wire. And now I'm going to turn on. What's going to happen? Well, of course, the light's going to turn on. And look, too, there's current flowing through. Now, this battery is 9 volts. What happens if we raise the voltage on the battery. Well, look at that. Light bulb gets bright. Hey, what happened? What happened to our light bulb? Well, look. There was too much current being drawn, so the fuse blew. And that's actually what happens. When when there's too much current being drawn, the, uh, the fuse blows. Let's fix this fuse. Let's let's raise the current rating of this fuse. Well, looks like I gotta throw this fuse away because it's bad, right? So let's throw the fuse away. Put another fuse in here. Do this. They're all wonky now. Okay. So so this fuse now has let's let's do this. Let's make it a 20 amp fuse. Um so how do we know the amperage that we're pulling through? Let's break this. Oh, let's break this side of the circuit. Let's put an ammeter in here. It is. Fuse is bad. Fuse, fuse was bad because I threw it away, right, Rolando? But check this out, buddy. I'm putting current in here. See, is this one? Is this one? Yeah. This one, I'm going to put this, this amp meter in here. And of course, I'm going to put it in the circuit. That's why I opened up the circuit, right? This is a 20 amp fuse. I'm going to go ahead and, and bring it back down to 10 amps, let's say. Um, the voltage is at zero. That's why we don't have any light, so we don't have any, any current. But let's, let's increase this. As we increase it, notice that electrons start to flow. Look. The, the ammeter is measuring 0.15 amps. So as we increase it, the current on the ammeter starts going up. More electrons are flowing. Now this was a, it was it a 10 amp, right? Um, back and raise the voltage. So as soon as we hit 10 amps, we're okay at 10 amps, but we go over 10 amps, 10.5 amps, but we don't have, we don't have, good evening, good evening, how are you? We don't have 10 amps yet, we got 1.1 1. 1 amps. So I'm going to see if we can increase this at 20 amps. Now I'm going to, I'm going to have to crank the voltage way up. I'm at 28 volts, it's at 3 amps. Look how many electrons are flowing. Look how bright this is getting. We're not at 10 amps yet, so that fuse isn't blowing, right? We're getting there. Actually, my finger's getting tired. Six amps, seven amps. Look how bright that light bulb is. Nine. Oh man, this thing's going so fast. Look at all those electrons going through there and they're doing their thing up here and the light's going all over the place. So we're at 9.29 .9 volts, 9.3, 5. Let's, let's see what happens when we hit 10 amps. Boom, fuse blows. We just hit 10 amps. Current flow stops. That's how a fuse works in, in a circuit. Anyway. And certainly good evening. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, 
U, Rolando. Trey was out there somewhere. Um, Trey thinks that I was minding him talking. No, I love to talk. I loved, love, love interaction from, from, from everyone out there. But anyway, that's how, that's how resistance, or well, that's how current in a circuit and voltage is turned into, into work, which is power in this case, or in this case, light, because that, that light bulb was getting hotter too. Um, but we could, we could see the, the amperage because we broke the circuit and we put, uh, um, you know, a meter in there. And, and, and I didn't, I'm going to go ahead and pull the fuse out and put another fuse in here. We've got infinite fuses. Okay. Um, oh, look, it broke. Why? Because I still had this thing on 100 volts. Man, that's, that's bad news. I keep, I keep blowing fuses. <laughs> All right, so we're back here again. Uh, our voltage is that. Let's go up to, to 23 volts. Now here, here's something else. Let's, let's bring a voltmeter out. And that voltmeter, let's, let's do a little, a little checking here. So if we check from this point here, I think we can do that. to this point here, we're measuring 0 0.04 volts. Why are we measuring 0 0.04 volts? This is like a wire, isn't it? Let, let's let's do it here. Let's do it from here to here. How much are you? How much are we measuring? The reason is is because there's a little resistance in that fuse. But notice that there's no voltage there. If if we blow that fuse, let's see. That fuse is what I want to. Okay, four amp fuse. I don't want to have take forever. If we blow that fuse, you think we'll have voltage across this point? I mean, we said we would, right? Let's take and increase the voltage. Let's see if we can watch this. Let's see, let's increase this voltage little by little. Oh, and I can't see the current either. We said it was. We said it was a four amp rating on that. Look, our voltage is going down. Interesting, huh? Why? Why is the voltage going down across that fuse? Well, because we're increasing the current and the resistance is staying the same. If we look at, we look at the Ohm's law triangle in this case, Yeah, we can. if we look at the ohms law, so so here's the thing: the resistance is staying. You know, say it's one ohm, okay? Just because we don't know what the what the we could measure it, but whatever the resistance is, it's staying the same. Now, what we are doing is we're increasing the voltage, and uh, we we lost that. Thing. We we lost it. So as we increase the voltage, we bring that. We increase that voltage. Resistance staying the same. So if the voltage increases, or if we increase the current, which is really what we're doing, that voltage drop across there. Resistance is staying the same. That formula has to stay the same. That ratio has to work. And that's, that's what's happening. As we're raising this voltage, there's more current going through there and less resistance, or the same resistance. The voltage drop goes down. Watch, as soon as we hit four, what do you think will happen? You know, Rolando, what, what will happen if we hit, if we open that fuse up? D, do you know? I, I'm waiting because there's a lag in, in what I say in the comments, right? And I'm going to probably go on anyway. So if if we blow that fuse, that voltage drop will go from zero three to zero four. Five. Boom. We now have look at this eighty five volts here. We've got eighty five volts here. That voltage drop from that battery is is across the fuse because it's an open. And, and actually, anywhere, anywhere. Let's let's fix that fuse. Can we fix that fuse? Nope. Because we still 
we still have too high voltage. Let's, let's bring it down. Yes. Another bad, another bad fuse, right? So, so let's, let's fix the fuse. Let's go ahead and fix the fuse. So the, the voltage drops that we have, like for instance here to here, zero. But as soon as that fuse blows, I'm just going to take the current rating so it'll blow. As soon as it blows, oh, my bad, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still across the, uh, um, the, the, the wire. It's going, to be, it's going to be zero anyway. Let's see. Let's see. How am I going to do that? Yeah, between here and here. What's the voltage between here and there? That's, no, it's still going to be the same. Yeah, it's it's going to be across the fuse because the fuse is what is what blows. Let's just let's just raise the the voltage up again. We got our voltage drop there. Um, let's check the voltage drop between there and here. What do we have? Excuse me. We've got zero between those two spots. If this fuse is working, let's fix the fuse. Oh. Lower the look, another blown fuse, man. Let's uh, let's go ahead and fix the fuse again. Fix the fuse. Look, we've got a voltage drop across our light bulb. That voltage over here is 40 volts. Look what we got over there, almost 40 volts too. Because remember, we had a slight voltage drop across here, 0 0.04. So if we got 0 0.04 here, we're gonna have Whatever, whatever the voltage drop is here, well, whatever it is, whatever the voltage drop is here, it's 40 volts. It's going to split up. It's going to split up across this, this uh, bulb and across this fuse because in a sense there's a little bit of a resistance here and there's some resistance here too. In fact, there's probably more. That's why we get a voltage drop across that right there. And a voltage drop across that right there. Now check this out. I'm going to open up the circuit. I'm going to open up the circuit, and I want to put resistor in place. This is a resistor. There. Bring this down. All right. Now let's let's look at the value of the resistor. It's a thousand ohm resistor. Let's uh, let's go ahead and crank our voltage up. Oh wow, we, we don't we don't have any any uh, actually there is movement. So so this resistor, there is some electron movement. You see it moving. So this resistor is 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 basically dropping all the voltage across it. Is what it's. We go over here and we measure right here. Right here, all our voltage is right there. So the voltage doesn't drop across this anymore, or the fuse for that matter. Very little. There, there might be just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Well, it's almost not, not, we can't read it. Over across the bulb, almost, see, we've got 0.41 volts there. Now, if we change this resistance, look what happens. We go, smaller. Look, the voltage drop starts to increase here. And look, we're starting to get some little some little rays of light. See? Now, how, how do I make this bulb brighter with a 100 ohm resistor? What we do is we take the battery voltage and increase it. Remember, again, we're back to this formula, we increase the voltage, the resistance stays the same, so the current flows, the more current flows. And as we change the voltage, look, look at the voltage, look at the current flow, current is increasing, look at, look at the light, um, see? So, so there's there's the bulb at full light. If we take, if this were a variable potentiometer, and that's how variable potentiometers, you know, knobs on the radios and stuff, that's how they work, or the light dimmer, in, in one way or the other. But but anyway, 
If we take and we raise the resistance, look, light goes down, light goes up. Cool, huh? That would be like that, like that uh, that I just mentioned. Okay, let's see what else we have here. And I'll, I'll go ahead and open up the circuit construction so you guys can play with it too. I'm gonna make it available. And, uh, and really though, that at this point concludes the Ohm's Law circle. The, uh, what, did, what was this one, the, the Ohm's Law info. And I've got them all opened up. That one there, that was just uh, how, how stuff worked. Um, I also want to point out that the labs that we're going to do in, in the lecture are also in the module. And I put them like this. This is, this is the, the material, basically, and then this is the lecture. I'm sorry. This is the lecture that we just talked about, Gee, And, and this, these are the labs that we'll be working on. Um, let's, let's, let's look at them. In this lab... We're basically going to take um, a resistor, four resistors, and put the colors down, and then calculate the value, and then with the ohm meter measure it. And that's that's going to be that. Then we're going to put some resistors in a circuit, one resistor after the other. We're going to calculate the value, you know, with with the uh, with the color codes, and then we're going to measure the values. Put three of them together, form together, and then one and four, two and four, and three. And, so that, that's one exercise, or one lab. Another lab will be this one here, where basically the, the purpose is to calculate and measure current in a series circuit. So we're gonna put, we're gonna put uh, uh, resistors in series at this point. It says, no, nope, before starting experiment, be sure the resistor values are available. So if resistors are not available, use resistors close to the value. So we're gonna use uh, resistors that are, that are one ohm, or 100 ohms, I'm sorry. And we're going to take and apply current, kind of like we showed you in in the uh, in the lab there, the simulator. We're going to we're going to calculate the current. Well, how do you calculate the current? Well, if we go back to the triangle to calculate the current, of course it'll be in milliamps. Excuse me. We're going to take the voltage and divide it by the resistance. That'll be the calculated. How do we calculate? I mean, how do we uh, measure? The current, we take and we open up the current. Of course, we power off first, put our ammeter in between it, and uh, and then put down the value of the actual current. And keep increasing the voltage like you can see. Keep calculating the, uh, uh, the, the, the current and, of course, measuring it. And then down here, we'll calculate each, uh, each of these and... Um, these will be different resistor values at this point, but with the same voltage, do the same thing. You'll calculate the, the current and then measure it. That is that one. Then this one here, let's pack it to any 14. This one here, we'll take what's called a decade box, which is a box which a, with a bunch of different resistor values on it. And we'll, we'll dial up basically these resistor values. And we'll calculate with 10 volts in the circuit. We'll calculate, and this is what the circuit looks like. We'll calculate the current, and then we'll measure the current. Um, it'll be 10 volts, as you can see. We'll put the ammeter in the circuit and put the decade box also in the circuit. And uh, we'll, we'll do it. And this was, this was part of that last section about the different thicknesses of wire and what uh, what currents they'll be able to, to carry, and we're not we're not going to worry about that. Right? Um, and then there's this one on lab meters, which this is a project. This is also a lab. This one we get five resistors. This one we get five resistors. We use an ohm meter, an amp meter, and a volt meter to verify Ohm's law. So. Here we're placing them on the on the breadboard. We record the the uh, the color codes for each resistor. The color codes. We calculate the the value. Um, and this right here. Uh, 
we're, we're measuring the resistance. So we're basically doing the same thing we were on the other one, right? And then this one here, we calculate the current. We just calculate, we don't have to measure it. Uh, as long as we know what the resistors are, then we can, we've got the calculated amounts and the measured amount. We use, uh, does this say use for each resistor, calculate the current when connected to a, a 10 volt DC power supply. Um, and the question is, do we use the calculated values or the measured value? I bet that question will come up multiple times and I'm not going to say right now. We're going to connect a resistor number one to a 10 volt, don't turn the power. And then we're going to open the circuit and place an amp meter in the circuit. We're going to turn the power off. And then we're going to read and record the current in the tape. And then we'll repeat that for each resistor. So this is measured. Oh, so this has got to be. And that really, that really concludes the labs the lecture. And anyway, um, anybody have any questions whatsoever? Any questions at all? And it can be about questions about fuses, questions about switches, questions about the intergalactic traveler traveling, you name it, you, you can ask the questions all you want now. Uh, I, I'll give an answer. Didn't say it was the right answer, but I'll give an answer. Don't forget, uh, if, if you follow the channel, you know, to to subscribe down there right I mean that's that's what they usually say don't forget to give a thumbs up um, I do want everybody that's here to, to come back I don't always do lectures like this this is part of a class that I teach and, and I thought I'd go ahead and and, uh, and, and allow students to, to come in if uh, um, if if they wanted and ask questions and thank you for for coming in if, if which you did and uh oh hello bella and uh i i do a lot of different things on this channel uh sometimes i play sometimes i build sometimes i uh have fun but uh well unless nobody has any questions i think i'm going to probably end it here and uh do what i always do and that's uh tell you that no matter what you do do it just for fun thanks folks for showing up and Live long and prosper. I can find the, the off button now. In OPS. And I can't find it. There it is.